So I'm getting ready to meditate for the first time uh, of this 30 days for one hour. Uh, I have <laughs> no expectations of how this is going to go other than I'm pretty sure it's going to be really hard. I sat down and I settled into my meditation position. I think this pose is called Lotus. I could be wrong. If you're an influencer named the Zen of Dad, Buddha Buddy, Meditation with Maddie, etc., etc., I'm sure you will let me know in the comments. I put my phone in Do Not Disturb. I set my timer and I made sure that the sound was on. Yes, I paid $2 for this ringtone. Okay, John, you just have to sit here. That's it. Don't think. Well, think. But don't think too hard or too deep. But the emotions are compressed. It's okay, nonetheless. It's just one hour. Oh my god, one hour? This is a long time. Wait, the timer? Is it set? I don't know. Oh my god. It doesn't matter. Don't check the time. Time is an illusion. You set the timer. Trust yourself. I don't trust myself. 58 minutes left. Oh boy. I, I messed this challenge up real hard. The objective was to do one hour of meditation every day for 30 days. And I was going to sit down and I was going to not move for one hour and breathe and think. And I did that a few times. And then... I changed the objective, still an hour, but I changed the strategy and the approach. Uh, I'm going to try and break up more meditations uh, in 30 minute chunks, maybe 20 minute chunks, just depending on what's going on in my life. I've got a small little change to the daily meditation habit. A pillow. So I thought maybe my back is bad. <laughs> I got a bad back and that's why it's hurting. But it probably was hurting because even though I've been meditating and I've been meditating for 10 minutes a night with my son doing guided meditations, I've been meditating for 10 to 15 minutes here and there, and it's been a sporadic habit at best for the last year or so, I've not sat down for an hour, an entire hour, uninterrupted. So my back just probably wasn't used to sitting there for an hour. Meditation is a powerful habit, and it's something I want to keep in my life far beyond 30 days. So I sat down and searched on YouTube, how to build a meditation habit. That is how I stumbled across a monk and his YouTube channel. And there I am. My name is Nick Yamahavong. Nick used to live in Malibu after being born into a refugee camp. He was living what many would call the American dream. Then he gave it all up to go and pursue being a full-time monk. It is honestly really wild to watch his journey unfold over the course of his YouTube video library. He confirmed what I already knew about habit building, but I somehow had forgotten when I set out to start meditating. Like my running habit, meditation wasn't something I could jump straight into. Meditating for an hour without practice is like running a marathon after only training for a few weeks, which I did do a couple years ago, but it took over a month to recover from that marathon and another year before I started running again. But from that marathon, I did learn something about perseverance, the power of the mind, and overcoming personal obstacles, just like I did during my last one hour meditation session. I set my phone far out of arm's reach. I had my pillow next to me ready to go. I don't know what triggered it, but I quickly found myself spiraling deep into my own personal hell. Regret and shame filled my body, and I broke down. I hope it's obvious that I'm joking. Yes, I did have a mental breakthrough, not a breakdown. There is a difference. <laughs> I'm fine. You go lay down, you go lay down. Uh, did I cry? Oh yeah, most definitely I cried. I broke down. I was sobbing. I was in a very dark place. I had what some would consider a religious experience, a spiritual awakening, but no, it did not sound like a drunken whale. Those emotions were fleeting, but those are the things I want to hold on to with a meditation practice. That crying session, that awakening, if you will, happened to be the last time I meditated for an hour. But the craziest thing that I learned from this hour experience where I broke down, I think it's that all of these things that I've done wrong in my life, which there are a lot of things. There's too many to list here right now. This would be like a four hour long video. But I thought about a few of the things that I regret the most and that I judge myself for the most, the things I judge myself for the harshest. And I felt all that shame, that guilt. I felt sorry for the people I'd hurt in my past. I felt sorry for the mistakes I'd made and that led to shame, that led to guilt. That set and 
kind of like made this like ball of regret and this nasty core that was probably sitting there and has been sitting there this whole time. And I, I've probably been, I know I've been using that as like a filter and a, a lens that I view the world through. And this lens allows me to judge other people and to project my own inner hatred of myself, my past, if you will, onto other people. And that's not fair to do to people. I, I should forgive myself. You should forgive yourself the way that you should be forgiving other people. The way that I forgive other people, at least. <laughs> it's, it's so crazy. Go it up, go it up. <laughs> what are you doing? It's okay.